Hello everyone. In this video we're going to learn how to configure a SQL data object in Aviva System Platform to read and write from a SQL database. Some background information before we start the demo. SQL Server is an application software for relational database management system from, from Microsoft. That can be used for creating, maintaining, and managing um, the relational databases. It is very helpful when it comes to storing the data in the back end in order to process it. Now, the SQL data object in System Platform is used to store and retrieve data from a SQL Server database. Typical applications for this object include basic recipe management and database capture of attributes values. And now let's move to the demo. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio um, just to show you the database and the table that we're going to be working on. All right, so in the databases, we have a database called Specs, and there is table um, sheet one. And that basically has some um, uh, columns regarding um, three different classes with different, like different specs for different um, products, basically. Let's say lump, rake, and angle. And um, make sure when you're working on a database in SQL Server um, that you have an identity column, because otherwise you're going to get a, um, an error in system platform, basically, when creating the SQL data object. So I'm going to minimize the uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to go to the System Platform ID. The first thing to do here is I'm going to right-click on the SQL Data object and create a new instance. I'm going to call this one SQL Data Specs, same name as the database, and I need to drag and drop this under an area in my um, app engine. So I'm going to drag and drop this under the SQL area. I'm going to double click on the SQL data underscore specs object and I'm going to start configuring. First thing we need to do here is the in the database tab uh, we need to enter the server name for the database and in our case it's going to be the local host because I'm working on the same machine where the database exists. Then I'm going to add the database name. I can just click on this drop down menu and I can see the existing databases. So I'm going to click on specs and then it's going to look uh, for what's inside of specs and I can choose this table, which is sheet one. Okay. After that, we need to click on test connection just to make sure that everything is working. So it's saying connection to the SQL server is succeeded. It found the database and it found the table. I'm going to say OK and move to the design tab. Now here we can click on the um, get from database basically to fill the table definition. This has all the columns from our database and it has the data type, the uh, read write access, and it also has a, a field for the assigned attributes. And this is what we're going to be working on right now. So as we saw in the database, there is class break, angle, and length. And what we need to do is we need to go and create attributes that correspond to these columns. So I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to click on this plus sign here and say this first attribute is called class. And it's, I think, data type string. So I'm going to fast forward the video now to create all the attributes. Now that we're done creating all of these attributes that correspond to the columns, we're going to um, save and close this object. 
and I'm going to double click the object to open it one more time and I'm going to go to the design tab and um, in the design tab basically we can assign the attribute so I'm going to click on the class column or it's a it's a row in this case and I'm going to click on assign attributes and then I need to fetch for that SQL data underscore specs object and click on class attribute. I'm going to do the same thing with break. All right. So now at this point, we have all of the columns um, assigned attributes that we've created in the object. There's one more thing to show here is the data sheet tab. And if you click on the refresh here, it will fill the table for you, basically, according to the database table. And then if you click on the commands tab, also you can see the commands that are available for the SQL data object. As you can see here, there's, for example, attribute to DB replace that we're going to utilize. And there's also a DB to attribute command, which writes and reads from uh, into the database. Um, if you need to know more information about this, you can always check the help file here. So now at this point, uh, we're ready to start testing, reading and writing to the database. So I'm going to save and close this object. And I'm going to deploy it. All right, once the object is deployed with no errors, I'm going to right click on it one more time and view an object view. I'm going to try and make this ID smaller. I'm just going to put them side by side so we can see the changes that we're making immediately in the object. So I'm going to open the object one more time and just click here on the data sheet tab and refresh. So instead of looking into the database itself, everything here is mirrored in the object basically. So whenever we make a change now to any of these values, it's going to change here. All we need to do is just hit refresh. All right, so first things first, we're going to go and look for the two attributes that we're interested in. The um, attribute to DB replace. So I'm going to add this to the watch window. And then I'm going to add the DB to attributes command. And I'm going to add that to the watch window. And I'm going to go ahead and add the other attributes. We're also going to add these record select next command and the record select previous command to go up and down uh, between the rows in the database. So if we need to change rows, we need to enable or disable these two commands. All right, so as you can see here, we've chosen all of these attributes and they are showing the first row in the database. So it's class one. They're showing 250 and 90 as the values for the rake angle and depth. And if we want to, so they're reading from the database. We're actually reading from the database to the object. And if we want to write into the database, all we need to do is to change the value of, let's say the length here. I'm going to right click on it, say modify. And I'm going to change this to 100, say apply. And then I need to activate this attribute to db replace command. All right, so now I've changed the value to 100. 
And if I come here and refresh this, as you can see, the length changed to a hundred. So we just wrote into the DB. Basically. In order to go to the next uh, record or the next row or the previous row, all you need to do is to uh, play with these record select next command and record select previous command. So I'm going to modify the next command and say modify. And then apply. Okay. And as you can see here, it changed to class three. So we went to the next command basically, or the next row. Uh, so it's class three and it's reading the values associated to the third row here, which is class three, right? And again, if we want to make any changes, we need to make the change here in any of these attributes and then push it by enabling or making the attribute to DB replace command as true. And this is how you read and write from a database using the SQL data object in System Platform.